Hey, welcome back to the third lesson of our Photon tutorial series on how to convert your games into online multiplayers. For this lesson, we're going to be networking our paddle prefabs and player controls. Now, the first thing that we want to do is convert our paddle prefab into an object that can be instantiated across the network. For this, we'll want to go to the prefabs folder that has our paddle prefab saved, and we're going to double click on our prefab, which will open it up. Now the first thing that we need to do to network this object is attach the photon view component. So I'm going to click on add component and then search photon and click on photon view. The next thing that we need to do is move this prefab to the resources folder. And you should already have the resources folder from importing our matchmaking add-on. And so I'm going to expand that and then we have the photon prefabs folder which is the folder that I will drag our paddle prefab to. Now to get the paddle object to spawn into the scene, we need to replace our photon player with the paddle object. And the easiest way to do that would be to rename these objects. But I'm actually going to change the code instead, and that way you'll be able to see how the object is being instantiated into the scene. To do this, I'm going to go over to our game scene. We then want to select the game setup object, and we want to open up this game setup controller script. So here we have the script opened in Visual Studios, and this is the line of code that instantiates our photon player object into the scene. And so to change it so that it instantiates the paddle instead of the photon player, we want to change this string to be paddle. Let's then save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity we want to remove our old paddle prefabs from the hierarchy. Now we can test our project and see if it instantiates our paddles into the scene. Alright so here I have my project running and when I click play in the standalone I'm then loaded into the game scene. You can see that I only have one paddle. Then when I click play in the editor this loads into the game scene and it still looks like I only have one paddle, but that's because both paddles are in the same location. So if I expand my hierarchy, you can see that we have two paddle clones, and one is owned by player one, and one is owned by player two. So it looks like we now have our networked paddles. Next, let's work on fixing the starting positions for our paddles, and then we'll do the movement. So let's go back to our game setup script. In this script, we need to check which player is which, and then spawn their paddle with the correct transform. And since there's only two players at a time, it makes it very easy. So the first thing that we're going to do is add an if statement around where we're instantiating the paddle object. And this if statement is going to check to see if we are the master client. So if photon network dot is master client, if this is true, then we want to instantiate the paddle with this line of code. I'm then going to type an else statement, and so if we're not the master client, then we want to instantiate the paddle a little differently. And so I'm going to copy our instantiation line of code and paste it into the else statement, but then we need to make a change to the rotation. Now if you remember from our Pong series, our paddle prefab is created from an empty game object that has the transform at the center of the scene, and then it has the paddle sprite object as a child, and this object is moved down in the Y position by negative five. This makes it so that we can rotate the parent object by 180, and that'll put our paddle object on the other side of the playing field. So for this line of code, all we have to do is change the rotation so that it will be 180 on the z-axis. This is done by typing quaternion dot Euler. Then you want to pass in a new vector 3 value 0, 0, 180. And that should handle the instantiation of both paddles. So let's go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to Unity. From here we need to make a few more changes to our paddle prefab in order to synchronize the movement of the paddle. First thing that we need to do is add the photon transform view. So I'm gonna click add component, and then with photon typed into the search, I'm going to click on photon transform view. We're then going to select this component and drag it into the observed components of our photon view. We then only need to synchronize the position of this object because once this object is instantiated into the correct rotation, the object will not rotate any more than that. So I'm going to uncheck rotation. Now at this point, let's test our project and see how well it works. Okay, so here I have my project built and running. 
I'm going to click play in the standalone and then play in the editor. So here you can see that we for sure have two paddles and both paddles have the correct transform. Now let's see what happens when I try to move one of my paddles. So you can see that as I move the paddle of the standalone, which is this bottom paddle, it also moves the top paddle, but only on this client. On the other client, however, it moves the bottom paddle without moving the top paddle. Then when I click over to the editor and try to move my paddle, you'll notice that the same thing happens. This is because in our paddle controller script, we're not determining whether we own the paddle before we can move it. So let's go ahead and fix this now. So we're gonna open up our paddle controller script. Inside our paddle controller script, we need to add a namespace up the top, which is using photon.pun. We then need to add a variable to hold our photon view. So this is going to be a private variable of type photon view, and I'm gonna call it my PV. We then need to initialize this variable and we'll do that within the start function. And so I'll type my PV equals git component and then we'll look for a photon view. Once you have this variable initialized, we can then check the ownership of the object the script is attached to. And we'll just do that within the update function by putting an if statement around our paddle movement function. And so I'm going to type if and then my PV dot is mine. This is a boolean variable which is set to true if the local client owns this object. And so if this variable is true then we can call the paddle movement function. And this is a general principle that you can use anytime you create a multiplayer game. And that is you first want to check for ownership of an object before you allow the players to control that object. So let's go ahead and save this script and then we'll go back to Unity. Now the last thing that we need to do is test our project. And so I'm going to build it out. I'm going to click play in the standalone and then play in the editor. When I try to move my paddle in the standalone, you can see that the paddle also moves in the editor. Then when I click into the editor and I try to move this paddle, I'll just move it to a different location. When I go back to the standalone, you'll notice that the paddle is in the same position. And there we go, we've now networked our paddles and synchronized the player controls. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. In the next lesson we'll go over how to synchronize the ball.